What's shaking everybody? Today's video is about recovery, specifically post skate recovery. So that doesn't mean just post game. It means anytime you come off the ice, this is the recovery uh, system that you're going to use. Um, and actually I'm going to give you a sneak peek. The first step, take your gear out of the bag, hang it up, let it dry. Don't let it sit in there all clammy and festering. <laughs> so, so that's step. Well, that might be step. Uh, four. Let's go through the other three key steps to help you recover when you come off the ice so that you're continually getting better and better and better. Cheers. If you've been watching for a while, then you know that I'm a fan of uh, using like the bivy ball or lacrosse ball, something that um, gets a little more point pressure when you're doing your self mile fascia release as part of your mobility training. When we're talking about recovery training, my preference is for you to use uh, a foam roller. And I have uh, for travel just a 12, 12 inch uh, foam roller, six inches in diameter. So it's pretty easy to, to take with you anywhere that you go. But the reason I want you to use a foam roller when you come off the ice is that it's just, it's a little more gentle. It doesn't have that same point pressure because everything when we first come off the ice is about trying to restore, recover, reset so that you have maximum recovery before your next session on the ice. So uh, you'll do nice gentle foam roll of your adductors. Again, gentle like a, like a flat, um, like a flushing massage rather than sort of an aggressive deep tissue kind of massage. So you'll get your adductors, um, you'll get your lateral, your lateral thigh. Don't get right on the sort of the IT band, that thick, um, connective tissue band on the outside. Instead, we usually focus on sort of the front border and the back border uh, to get where they sort of integrate with the quads and the hamstrings. So work on that. Get your quadriceps with the foam roller uh, and your lats. So right here, sort of the back border of your armpit and down, not, not up on your arm. So we'll get those areas with the foam roll and just spending about 30 seconds on each. Then we'll get into some gentle stretching. So we're not going to be using our FRC techniques or things like that. When you come off the ice, we'll just get into a gentle stretch position for our adductors. And then we'll do the little rock back just that it feels good. So at no point should it feel like you're over stretching or getting a really strong stretch. It should just be nice and gentle. You'll do about five or 10 like that on each side. And then we're going to try to open up our hips a little bit again, because you've been standing in that ready stance. So, um, just knee on the ground, nice and tall. We're not hyper extending our back. We're not coming way far forward like this, thinking that we're stretching our hip. We're not, we're actually kind of stretching our low back. So we'll stay, keep our bum tucked underneath and just glide so that we feel the stretch kind of up in here. We're not going to feel as much down in the thigh, but a little more up in here. We think about sometimes squeezing our bum cheeks together, gives us a little more stretch that way. The other two areas we'll get for sure with the static stretch are our lateral hip and there's lots of different ways we can stretch the lateral hip. One of them is the pigeon stretch, um, but a lot of times you tuck this leg underneath and so you're not really stretching what, what I really want you to be stretching. So if we're really going to get the lateral hip, keep that um, lower leg right sort of perpendicular to your body and then come here. So I can't even get this knee down because I feel a real strong, you know, actually a pretty strong stretch on my lateral hip uh, from that position. So I could even come up a little bit more. So it just feels like a gentle stretch. You could also do this standing with your leg up, you know, on a box or a bench or whatever, but just something to get a nice little stretch in that lateral hip. And then I also like to come back in and get some T-spine rotation. So good neutral uh, back position in, in a hands and knees kneeling. Bring one hand to your ear, bring elbow to elbow, and then rotate up and your head goes with your hand as you come up. And then the final piece of the puzzle is we want to add a breathing element. So uh, 
in the Shutout Academy with the Turning Pro clients, we have a, a, a real comprehensive program that they follow that's that's very specific. Um, you know, you feel free to add exercises to this that you really like, uh, but I want to make sure that you get this element in. So you're gonna find the wall, and you're going to get your bum right close to the wall and then from here you're just going to relax your legs so you're going to let your legs go into abduction but just relax you're not trying to get more range or force it we're just letting gravity give us a stretch and then in this position we're going to breathe with our belly and our chest so both should rise up we shouldn't have just one or the other going both are going to rise up we're going to breathe in through our nose for four seconds we're going to hold at the top for four seconds and we'll breathe out through our mouth for six seconds so it'll look like this breathing in through your nose then hold then out through your mouth So when I breathe in, I'm trying to expand my ribs. I'm trying to breathe in as much air as I can. Not like panic breathing, not like, you know, just, but just breathe in as much air as I can. Hold it for four seconds. And then again, just sort of gently blow the air out, not like you're blowing a balloon, but just gently blow the air out over six seconds, but trying to get all the air out and you're going to do that for 120 seconds so for two minutes you're going to really focus on your breathing let your adductors just relax without actively trying to stretch them and that'll be your last move of the physical recovery so that was some nice mobility work if you don't even have a mo like you don't even work on mobility other than when you come off the ice that's sort of a mistake too it's different mobility when you come off the ice than it is when you're you know trying to get a wider butterfly flare or looser hips that type of thing if you need a program like that i'll put a link somewhere in the comments or description to a free program i have it's a 14 day flexibility program uh, that yeah it's free so i'll put a link somewhere for that i know some of you are going to ask can i do a flush ride when I come off to get rid of the lactic acid. Yes, you can do a flush ride. Um, lactic acid actually dissociates very, very quickly in the system. So um, it isn't, there is something about bringing in sort of oxygenated, uh, oxygenated blood to the muscle and then removing waste products. There's definitely something to that, but it's just, it's yeah, a little pet peeve of mine because lactic acid itself dissociates really, really quickly. Uh, <laughs> so yes, you could. Is it crucial? No. Do you have to warm up before you do these recovery exercises? No, because you were just on the ice doing stuff. Um, some of you are going to ask, oh, but I've seen NHL teams and they actually do their workout when you come off the ice. Yes, they do. Um, some teams do in season because <clears throat> their, their, their schedule is such that immediately after a workout is gives them the most cushion of time for recovery before they're going to get to their next game. So they kind of have to do it that way. You can do it that way if your schedule is, is, is such. Those NHL workouts too, keep in mind, they're really short. Um, it's not that they then they hit the gym for like an hour and a half to do like a big lift. So yes, that's an option. And then you would do this recovery type module and then get on with your day. So now we've got your body feeling pretty good. Uh, we've done that deep breathing at the end, which is key. Don't don't skip over that or, or and, and don't just sort of go through the motions. Really think about it, feel what you're feeling, think about your breathing pattern because breathing is the only element of your autonomic nervous system that you can consciously control. Your autonomic nervous system is your fight or flight system um, and it's what sort of tells you like, oh my God, this is like I'm in danger or this is an emergency. And we feel that way when we play hockey. Um, our system gets revved up so by doing that deep breathing we're helping to kind of reset and bring your nervous system back down to a resting level so that you're not kind of in this constant state of stress now let's look at fueling your body the most important thing and you know people spend a lot of money on supplements every year and the most important thing is your hydration 
uh, it's a pretty simple thing to do to know exactly how much fluid you need to take in. Uh, so before you go out on the ice, just weigh yourself, you know, at home or whatever, just in your underpants, and then go and play hockey or have your practice or whatever it is. And then when you come home, uh, you know, or as, as soon as you can, weigh yourself again just in your underpants and however much you lose that is that is water weight so you know some people be like oh my god i lost four pounds of fat <laughs> in an hour no you've you've lost four pounds of water which is really significant i trained a goalie who would lose eight pounds of of fluid uh in an hour so um then take that number so let's just say you lose two pounds during the game you need to drink two to three measuring cups so a measuring cup is 250 mils so 500 to 750 mils for every pound of water weight that you lose when you're doing exercise so that's actually you know quite a bit that's like a liter to a liter and a half of fluid that you need to take in does it need to be gatorade no um really and i'm not talking uh tournament nutrition. Tournament nutrition is something different. This is sort of your everyday when you're on the ice, when you come off the ice, this is what you should do. You're not really at risk of using up all your energy stores when you're on the ice playing hockey. Even though you get tired and all that, you're not really depleting your energy store to that point where you really need to be taking in, you know, a lot of extra calories. You want to take in about uh, 20 grams of carbohydrate, no, 20 grams of protein, 40 grams of carbohydrate in some form. So that could be uh, a post-workout recovery shake. It could be banana and peanut butter and a bagel. It could, you know, it could be whole food, whatever is your preference. Post-workout shakes, there's nothing magic to them. It's just a convenience. Or if there is something magic in them, then we probably don't want to take it. <laughs> but, uh, you know... It's, just, it's a convenience. So if you get one that's just really is just protein and carbohydrate and it doesn't have a bunch of other sort of extra stuff in it, if that's what it takes to get you to drink some fluid, get about 20 grams of protein, 40 grams of carbohydrate, as soon as you can when you come off the ice, then that's perfect. Um, let's get back to the rehydration part. So it doesn't have to be Gatorade, but it probably should have some electrolyte in it. So some sodium and potassium because you, when you sweat, you lose more than just water. Um, so the water, two to three measuring cups. So 250 uh, or 500 to 750 mils for every pound of water weight that you lose. 20 grams protein, 40 grams carbohydrate in whatever form suits you the best. Um, and sort of as soon as you can. So the first would be doing the physical stuff and then it would be the nutritional stuff. Yeah, I think that pretty much covers the nutritional stuff. And then you would have your regular like meal, whatever it is, supper or, you know, a regular meal later. So it's not just that that's kind of all you need. Um, and then let's talk about the mental side of it. So resetting the mental side of it, I think, is just as important as, uh, you know, the physical and the nutritional side of it. I want you to wait at least an hour um, after you've come off the ice before you sort of tackle this little task. And it's, it's really simple. You're just going to get, uh, you know, a, a simple notebook that you keep all your notes in. So, you know, for me, it's a, it's a green binder. It's the same green binder that I use to track my training in. Um, and that's sort of where everything hockey goes. So all you're going to do is in that book, you're going to write down, um, and keep in mind, this is going to be very like an objective thing. Like, so your comments are going to be on strategy, skill, um, physical elements, not on, your value as a goalie. So you, you, know, you can't write down, for example, I suck as a goalie, I was terrible today. You know, that, like you're not gonna use this to, to sort of beat yourself up. You're gonna, maybe it did suck today and that's fine, that happens. <laughs> but what you're gonna write in the book is, um, you know, um, my mental focus, you know, wasn't, wasn't good today. Um, you know, so you're gonna write down two to three things you did really well because you always did something really well like i tied my skates so they didn't come untied <laughs> you know is it like like it, even if you have to grasp at straws you're going to pick something um, but then you're going to pick one to two things that you didn't do so well um, so that and they're going to be kind of constructive again so it can't be you know i sucked at this it might be um you know when i 
had to do multiple, um, you know, multi-directional pushes from my butterfly, I wasn't keeping track of where my glove and blocker were. I was, when I went into my butterfly, I picked my stick up off the ice or whatever it is. So writing it down, just very matter of fact, this is what it was. And then you're going to write down one or two things that you're going to focus on the next time that you're on the ice for a practice or a session with your coach. I specifically say, you know, not a game because and it, and it could be if it's sort of a, oh, that's a common theme and I've made that mistake before and so I'm going to make that my focus point in the next game, that's fine. If it's something new that you're just trying to learn or refine, then sometimes it's not the best to make that your focus in a game. And if, if for focus in a game, make it something that you can do, but maybe it takes a little concentration. If it's something that's like, yeah, I'm just really, really struggling with that technique right now, keep it to just work on in practice and sessions with your goalie coach. So you'll spend no more than 30 minutes on this, probably really closer to 15 minutes. It's not uh, an opportunity for you to nitpick through every single thing you did wrong. We all make a million mistakes. Watch any NHL game and you see a goalie make, you know, five, six, seven, pretty big mistakes. Now they have the skill that they can recover from it better than we can, but it's not to beat yourself up. It's to look at, hey, what are the big things that I didn't do great? Uh, what are the big things I actually did really, really well? And what, are, what am I going to focus? Where's my low hanging fruit? What I'm going to focus on to try and improve so that I do better next time. So let me know what you think about all that in the comments below. Uh, if you have any other questions that you have for me or that you'd like me to answer, fire them in the, question, in the comments below. Although I see all that stuff, I answer it all the time. If you're going to do just two of those things, you're like, oh, that's a lot. I don't think I'm going to do all that stuff. But I will do two. <laughs> if you're going to do two, do the feet on the wall with the breathing. Do the rehydration when you come off the ice. Do the write in your journal. Do the foam roller. Do the gentle stretching. Do the 20 grams of protein, 40 grams of carbohydrate. <laughs> but those two would be the big two. Uh, and then don't forget the most important thing, hang up your gear, let it dry completely before you put it in the bag. Because honestly, you stink a little bit, just a little bit. I will catch you next time. Clean your gear.